Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveler. Once again today in the Travel Trade Talk, we're talking to professionals in the hospitality industry in Nepal. And today I'm with Mr. Ashish Kumar, who's the GM of Hyatt Regency Kathmandu. He's been here for a couple of years and he has worked previously in India in a number of branded properties. So we'll be talking about the challenges, the opportunities that the hospitality industry is facing at the moment. Hello, Ashish, and welcome to our Travel Trade Talk. Thank you so much. To start with, uh, I'd like to ask you, as the GM of Hyatt, where do you see the role that you're playing, the opportunities, what kind of market is it at the moment? Yeah, so as a GM of Hyatt, uh, it's a very responsible position uh, from the industry perspective and both from the Hyatt and the ownership perspective. So you will have to do things in a very judicious manner so that every decision that you take is in best interest of the asset, best interest for the country and the, and the market in which we are doing this business. So you're very accountable and you need to understand that um, how well you can explore every particular opportunities to drive the revenue and uh, the most important function that we do in our business is uh, to think, how do we make our guests happy? We do focus through our World of Hyatt program on uh, the repeat business. And we try to understand the sentiments of our customer, sentiments of our guest. And empathy is the power thing that we use in our company for every decision that we make. And that's how we drive a different business strategy. How do we attend to various uh, bubbles while doing the business? Hyatt is probably the first international brand that came into Nepal almost yes. two decades ago. Hmm. I mean, how do you see this legacy and how are you building on it? See, it's a matter of pride. And when you are the first one to enter into the country, such a beautiful country like this, then you are more responsible and accountable. So our promise has always been that we will deliver something very distinctive, very niche to our guest and also to all our stakeholders. You know, we believe in our prime motto that uh, we care for our people so that they can be the best. So that's the purpose. So when we are caring for our people, we touch various emotions and sentiments in our day to day life, be it our guest, our vendors owners, stakeholders. So we try to establish a proper balance so that we can deliver and be the preferred organization in whatever perspective business that we are doing so that uh, we can be on top of the game and we can do this game in a very different manner and keep evolving and challenging ourselves and uh, challenging ourselves uh, to deliver the best, uh, get ourselves accustomed and uh, uh, get up for the way the industry is expanding from the digital perspective, from the brand marketing and uh, the space in which the hotel industry is entering, uh, you have to be on top of the game. So knowledge is something you need to continuously evolve. And in term, being the general manager, you have also the responsibility to develop the team down the line, which will be beneficial for our hotel, which will be beneficial for our company Hyatt. And also, this is something that we like to do for our industry. So every single person, the last person in the team matters a lot um, to the leadership team. Also, you came in as the GM probably just post pandemic yeah. and that whole recovery till date, we're probably at near a better situation now. How has that journey been? I mean, as the GM in, in those challenging times. So I took over in February, 2022, and uh, there were yet a lot of restrictions and protocols that was followed by the government. And uh, we, we being an international chain, we had our philosophy of doing business during the recovery period lot of precautions. It was something that we were telling our users that we are safe so that uh, they can come and be our guests and use us. So uh, it was again a very responsible time. 
and uh, market was very difficult because we understand that tourism was hit and it was the last to recover. While I was coming <clears throat> in India, we could see the development, uh, the tourism, the growth was happening from the business perspective, but Nepal did not show those. But yes, we, we went back to our uh, business partners in the country. We went to our feeder markets. We assured them that this is a healthy place and uh, we are we have taken a lot of precautions and they can do business with us so slowly and very steadily the market started evolving we started doing business and uh, but uh, currently also we have seen that a lot of market in nepal uh, the feeder markets the feeder countries like uh, portugal uh, italy uh, germany spain the U.S. market, these markets have still not thrived. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, if you want to give the number, we still see that about 37 to 40 percent uh, uh, degrowth from 2019 productivity. So we are still hoping and being optimistic that uh, these markets will grow. But however, the displacement was filled with a lot of uh, weddings that we did because that was the time when Thailand and other Vietnam and other wedding destinations did not open and Kathmandu really capitalized um, on it. So a lot of other players in the market also capitalized the business through wedding uh, weddings, which we also uh, uh, did in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, last year in our monthly activities. And also there was a lot of mice movement that we witness from India, um, pharmaceutical companies, the agriculture, the lot of uh, market that entered into uh, mice. So uh, mice was something that uh, entire country witnessed for the first time, uh, the surge in the mice business. So I hope uh, the same trend continues. Uh, I hope the same trend continues uh, this year also. Uh, and we are being optimistic in terms of growth of Nepal and uh, how it stabilizes as it was in 2018 and 2019. Talking about markets, uh, there has been some recovery. There's a lot of expectation in the tourism industry. How do you see India as a market and uh, are we really on track? Is that business coming back and improving? Uh, see, India business to Nepal was divided into various sub-segments. One, as we spoke just now about the mice segments. So again, the lot of things depends about um, the ease of doing business with the government policy. Uh, the India, uh, the wedding destination and uh, why I'm very optimistic because about month and a half back, there was an Indo-Nepal uh, conference that happened in terms of uh, wedding destination to promote so Indian wedding event planning companies, they came over here and had a discussion with government. There was a meeting, Solti hosted, we hosted them. Uh, and uh, it was a very fruitful discussion. So I really understand that the wedding will be a, a, a destination uh, to do and uh, the mice also. The casino business uh, also matters a lot in terms of volume, generating volume in Kathmandu. But um, what I believe that now since the casinos are opening at the, the Tarai region also uh, in the peripheries, so the players, uh, it is easy for them to go there rather than coming to Kathmandu. Nepal as a whole will definitely gain some attraction from the casino segment overall. But Kathmandu, I understand there will be a little dip. But uh, we are again witnessing it. We are trying to support our casino partners also so that they can drive business and it could be a win-win situation for both of us. For the Nepal developing as a wedding destination, uh, there are some challenges that uh, perhaps the hotel industry should be taking up. Do you think that Han can take these up? One is the with the Indian weddings, the gold issue where they're yes. not allowed to bring in. Yes. And two is India now through the Honorable Prime Minister Modi, is promoting its own destinations for weddings, for travel, for leisure. I mean, how, how does that pose a challenge to Nepal? See, um, yes, I understand that there are some positive development in India. 
But uh, I also understand with the discussion that happened with the event management company that the government of Nepal has shown a very positive inclination. So all these challenges that we see was about uh, the gold and other things also has been well received by the government of Nepal and uh, they are working on it. And uh, Nepal is blessed with uh, such a pleasant climate and uh, the the people are very nice so ease of doing business from the people perspective and the support perspective all over is very good in nepal so i understand that the market may shift from delhi calcutta not directly maybe but i also have heard of late that people from siliguri people from uttar pradesh people from nice. bihar has started choosing Kathmandu and other places as a wedding destination. So earlier I would see it would it is possible to have the shift in the feeder market from the wedding segment. But um, Nepal, I personally believe that it will always be a preferred destination from the wedding perspective because the spending capacity also of Indian clients are growing up. So earlier, say suppose 100 family used to do wedding in Nepal. Now there are more than 1000 family who would use. So the spending capacity in India, if it grows, definitely the uh, the the preferred destination it's of coming. and we as a hotel industry in our strategic meetings and our discussion with our sales and marketing team is also to penetrate into the potential market. So when we see that the hotels are coming up into these periphery regions, that means the feasibility study done by various companies has been showing positive trends, be it Bhairava, be it uh, uh, the Nepal, Nepal, Nepal Ganj or Raksol border of Bihar. So I have heard that there are other international brand is also coming up over there. So it's going to definitely grow. So there is no doubt that the market will not grow. And we have to be very positive about it and work towards it to make sure the market doesn't plateaus. The other big market, China, I believe yeah. now the movement has started with yes. COVID. Yes. What are your expectations I and mean, what do we need to be doing to get the, the Chinese tourists in? See, I understand that uh, China market was uh, in 2018 and 2019 was uh, 2000 to 2500 room nights business for us. Uh, and now with the China market opening up in this. So we, we saw a positive movement from China in the last quarter of last year. However, that particular time, I believe that the, the, the spending capacity of our Chinese uh, uh, guest uh, did not enter into the luxury segment. So they did visit Nepal, but they did not use the star category hotel in my understanding. I'm not sure how right I am. So there are certain hotels who did gain from these segment. But what I believe the, 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 the guest, the segment of uh, uh, guests that the Chinese who are coming and using us is yet to arrive. So with our business partners of Nepal, I understand how the country works now, the, the contracting and uh, the other uh, due diligence have started. So I'm being optimistic that in the coming months, we will see the Chinese uh, mm -hmm. guest and they are all very important because to handle the Chinese guest uh, for all of us who is there in the industry will need a different service design, their food habits. So we, like I said, empathy is our approach for everything. Mm -hmm. So to handle the Chinese guest, our chefs have to be activated. The service design have to be activated from the delivering perspective. So we need to be very careful and we are just getting prepared ourselves to welcome our Chinese guest. A little earlier, you mentioned uh, a confidence in Nepal as a destination with a number of hotels uh, coming up, brands. A number of international brands have entered recently into the Nepalese market. More are in the pipeline. How do you see this as competition or do you see this as an opportunity? You see a growth in the market? See, I understand uh, it is something very good to happen for Nepal. Uh, 
I do not want to be very myopic while I make this statement, but uh, having uh, Marriott, Hilton, to see other brands coming in Nepal is a very good thing because it gives us more opportunity uh, uh, to raise our standard, to raise our bar. The pricing dynamics of various chain remains different. So the elasticity of the market is checked and it only gives the other opportunity to do business. So, so the space in which Hyatt wants to play with the with the expanse of the property that we have in 37 acres, 280 rooms, the size of our room matters a lot, which is again so huge. The type of uh, experience that a guest can have. So every hotel, they have their own mm -hmm. strength and the unique experiences that they can sell. So it is an opportunity to, for us to, to define our market, to go back to our client and say that, we specializes in such uh, service deliveries, be it tangible or intangible. And the good part is that, that the property what we have, Hyatt Regency Kathmandu in 37 acres, uh, any international player will not is not coming up with such uh, opulence or such architecture, the Nevari architecture that we are proud of, that we boast ourselves uh, the size of the room, the, the, the restaurants and the eating spaces, uh, drinking and dining spaces that we have, the event space that we have. So I believe that we have, we in Nepal have, have already created a very niche corner um, in, in the heart of the people because it's the second generation that they are using us. You know, the, the, the outdoor venues that we have will still be the preferred. So that's what the sentiments is all about. People, if somebody is wanting to come to Nepal, they want to explore the, the, the weather conditions, the beauty. of. So the indoor venue will not be very promising. So with all due respect to all new entrants uh, <clears throat> to Nepal, we have our own niche. We want to uh, excel in our own space. You know, we want to go back to our client uh, and tell that what we specialize. What, uh, and with such a strong loyalty program of World of Hyatt that we have, uh, has lots to offer. Yeah, and our strategy will always be wor to, to work Hyatt as a company. So just not uh, Kathmandu. So we want to leverage uh, the business, the way of doing business in Nepal in that manner, to respect everybody's sentiments, to respect everybody's emotions, and uh, then play the game differently. You know, that's what I would say. On, I would like to play the game differently. On playing the game differently. Yeah. Uh, with so many hotels, I'm sure Han has some discussions going on. I'm sure the GMs at least meet. One big fear is that with all these hotels and so much rooms being supplied into the market, mm -hmm. is there enough marketing to take care of, create demand, or will that just end up into a price war and, you know, uh, hotels will start cutting down on certain things? See, I understand the, the market is growing. Nepal the, the expanse of Nepal as a country doing business with other nations has grown up threefolds. You know, when we see the data, Nepal is also growing economically. That is published everywhere. I would not yeah. come to the exactly the numbers, uh, what has been the Forex Reserve and what has been the GDP. It's, it, it is showing towards the positive. And, and the, so the business is happening. I believe the international companies or the international destinations they they are they are also preferring yeah, something like hydropower. It's 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 a big thing, you know. And if if people of Nepal, the owner of other hotels in Nepal, are investing, so I'm sure they have done their due diligence. And I have also witnessed the data. If if we were doing an ex occupancy, 
the same occupancy standard if we are doing it, but the other hotels are also doing the same occupancy. That means the market has grown yes. up. So the market has so many select service brands to offer now. True. You know, the, the Fairfield uh, or uh, you would say the, the Loft, uh, the other hotels, I've heard of Holiday Inn Express, um, Lemon Tree. So all these hotels are coming up and it will be able to cater to various segments uh, who is uh, coming to Nepal. The corporate movement in Nepal has grown up, has gone up. The embassy business uh, has grown up, what I understand and see. So I am very optimistic. The tourist, uh, the government is doing all possible things wherein I understand that the tourist will start sure, making please. it as a preferred destination with uh, the expedition business, which was so much. So earlier, what you would say, it was only expedition, but now the exp so many things have grown up. So I do not foresee, yes, um, initially there can be some hiccups, there would be some occupancy came, but uh, any investment is for future. Uh, so keeping that in mind, uh, it is a very healthy thing to see that the market so it is coming, Nepal is, will be slowly coming in the world map somewhere uh, and would be doing good. We hope. Yes, we have to be optimistic. And the change needs to start from somewhere. True. You know, so if we are seeing so many brands, so it's a, it's a great thing to embrace. It's a great thing to be proud of. So this is my personal understanding. And I am very positive and optimistic about various brands entering into Nepal. It's a good thing. People will be able to experience so many brands uh, in Nepal and every brand has their own USP. Yeah. As a final question, on a personal note, how have you seen your journey in hospitality and you being in Nepal, I mean, what does that mean to you? I, I believe you choose to be in Nepal. Yes. And so why? Uh, so uh, my journey in hospitality industry, I complete 25 years. Uh, this year, it's been wonderful. Uh, the best thing is that that uh, you interact with people uh, from so many countries, region. In India, only the 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 consumer behavior of from north is very different from the west. is very different from the south. So I had an opportunity to be in all part of India. So you are of continuously at the learning stage. You are learning to deal with emotions learning to understand human being, learning and then, you know, adapt yourself how you can play best, you know. So it has been a learning. So as you keep growing, you know, in the industry, you start learning about various verticals. So I'm a rooms division person. So in my earlier days, the focus was only rooms. Then you start expanding to learn your horizon, understanding the revenue part, understanding the sales and marketing, the tactical, the strategies. Then slowly you start understanding food and beverage, um, engineering, uh, finance. So being in hotel industry, you get yourself to challenge yourself, challenge your acumen, challenge your dedication, commitment in all facades of life. So the best thing is that in whichever department or in the industry or uh, you know vertical you go, you have a separate set of good and pure emotions of the soul. So connecting with people was always made me very fond of. So that has been my um, prime focus, how I connect with people. Then comes doing business. That's the main reason you are in the market. You are there in this space to do business. You have commitment towards your ownership. You have commitment towards your, uh, uh, your company and various stakeholders. So that cannot go wrong. You know, you, you, you need to take this as your own asset. I can be called a general manager or uh, any other designation, but the mindset has to be of a CEO. You know, so the moment you start thinking that you're, you have a CEO mindset, you start thinking like a CEO mindset. It's your own hotel, it's your own asset. True. So that changes. And Nepal, yes, it was my choice. It was my choice to uh, take this beautiful property and that too after it was recovering from COVID. So we all were, so I was 100%, I was aware my discussion with Hyatt and ownership that what challenge is going to be. And we said that, yes, 
we will take this challenge. And that's how when I entered in this space in 2022, uh, February, um, it was very difficult. It was very, so I used to say that, wow, this is a different challenge which I have never faced in life. We started, you know, started building the team, taking the buy-ins and, you know, assuring our ownership and various stakeholders that we are on the right track. There were some major decisions. There were some tough decisions. Uh, so that was all a part of the journey. And the best thing is what I believe is the, the hospitality of Nepal. I believe it comes from, uh, from, the, from the naturally, from within. You, uh, you don't have to teach a Nepali about hospitality. So how humble they are and the way they deal with the guest. It's not that that I would say, you know, they, they speak a... Uh, excellent accentuated English and that's some, a jargon used to lure the guests. No. So, you know, the, 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 how they deal, how they come across, that's something so beautiful. Uh, people should come and learn over here. So that was something very nice. And uh, obviously when you come over here and then you meet with so many people, uh, I believe they are more disciplined. Uh, be it there from the health perspective, because well-being is something that we as a company is focusing for everybody. Um, so, so the well-being is something that I have learned in Nepal, that uh, how people are so particular about getting up in the morning, going to the bed at 9, 9.30. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. And then again, getting up at 4 o'clock. Uh, their religious and spiritual aspect is also so nice. And uh, in the one place, uh, every community lives together. So all these things drive some sort of a positive energy. And when you are in a place which is filled with positive energy, then your task becomes easy. Then there is no stress, there is no competition, there is nothing. You are just playing in the market. You're just dancing in the platform which is given to you. So that has been my approach uh, from last two years that I have taken over this beautiful property. And uh, I am sure under my leadership and the team that I have is something so solid team. And uh, uh, they have, they are doing their best. I, I can't expect more from them. So I'm blessed to have such a great team. And no general manager can be successful alone. It's the people who make them successful. So very happy uh, to be here in this beautiful country talking to you. <laughs> so thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time and sharing yes. your ideas, your experiences with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dennis. Wonderful meeting you.